Okay, YouTube, this is my video of the rally build of a Tamiya TT02R chassis. I'm going to break this up into the different bags um, so that it makes some sense on how it goes through. I do a couple of things out of order from the instructions, but I'm going to try to note those in my presentation here. And while I'm building off of a TT02R, um, you can do what I'm about to do if you're going to try to build a rally um, version of a TTO2 with any of the versions. You just will have to buy different um, hop-up parts because the TTO2 comes with different things. You gain some hop-up parts, um, but you lose some um, some other things. So I'll, I'll mention those in my video as I go along. So the TTO2R... Um, basically comes with uh, different wheels um, designed for racing. So these are the medium narrow 24 millimeter uh, wheels with uh, racing slicks. Um, so we won't be using those for a rally kit. Um, that's one of the differences. The standard TTO2 comes with 26 millimeter uh, wheels. Um, the TTO2R also comes with aluminum drive shaft, it comes with aluminum uprights, it comes with CVA shocks. Um, it does not come with an ESC or a motor, which the regular TTO2s generally do. Um, so those are some things to keep in mind. So I'm also going to talk about the tools. I'm going to kind of gear this video, this video series towards people who maybe have never um, built to me as before or um, are new to modeling because the TTO2 is a beginner level kit. Um, so you want to get yourself a good um, knife. Uh, an Exacto brand is fine. I use the Tamiya Modeler's Knife Pro because I like the handle. It's a little bit easier for me to hold. Um, whatever um, knife you use, make sure that it's got a brand new blade whenever you're building a new model. Blades are cheap, so invest a little bit of money and get yourself a brand new blade every single time. The shape of the blade doesn't matter much um, as long as it's one that uh, you're comfortable using. Um, I do recommend getting this basic file set. If you don't have a file set, this is really inexpensive. It comes with a nice double flat sided file here and then one flat one rounded side file here and then one rat tail file here. And They're really nice and fine and they're basically perfect for, for modeling. Um, if you're going to be working on models and RC and stuff, you definitely want to get a pair of these. These are the Tamiya Sharp Pointed Side Cutters. That's these guys here. They're much better than regular off-the-shelf side cutters that you'd pick up like at Home Depot or Auto Parts Store or something. They're much, much smaller. They're really sharp. Um, the blades are really thin. They're, they're basically ideal for cutting parts off of a part sprue. They will make the, the building experience so much nicer. Um, they are a little bit spendy, around 35 bucks on Amazon, but um, it's certainly well worth the money. You're also going to need a hex driver for the mods that I'm recommending. Um, so this is a 2mm TRF hex driver. Um, it's got a nice fluorine coated tip, which makes getting in and out of the, the screw heads much easier. It doesn't really matter what brand hex driver you use, but you're going to want a hex driver because I'm going to use a uh, machine screws with hex heads, which make the kit so much nicer. And then finally, there are a few um, GIS screws that we'll need to use still, um, and for those, we're going to use the uh, Tamiya Screwdriver Pro number one. Now, a lot of people think you can use a Phillips head, and um, Tamiya is a Japanese brand, and they're not Phillips head. They are close, but they're not. It's actually a GIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, and the angle of the of the blades on the screwdriver tip are different than Phillips. They're a different angle here and they're different thickness. So while you can get away with using a Phillips head, um, if you're going to be building a lot of Tamiya models, I would highly recommend getting yourself a, a medium and a large um, GIS screwdriver. Doesn't have to be the Tamiya brand, but certainly GIS will make a huge difference because all the screws that come with the Tamiya cars, if they're, Phil if they're a crosshead, they are GIS. So building this up, we're going to build it to the standard length um, at 257 millimeters, and then we're going to build it to the high ground clearance. Now, um, the other TTO2s, they come with an option for a wide stance on the wheels, and the TTO2R does not, which doesn't matter because we're not, we wouldn't use the wide anyways for this build. So if you have a standard one, go ahead and build it to the standard width. So uh, we start off building with step three, and what that is is building up the spur gear. Now um, these are the parts that come in uh, bag A. 
that we will build building. And these are the two spurs that come with the kit. Um, now these spurs are a mod six gear pitch and um, the kit does come with a 25 um, tooth mod six pinion gear. Now, if you're just gonna use the stock um, spur gear and the stock pinion, um, they'll work fine. Just know that typically the Tamiya pinions are aluminum. They are unhardened and uncoated, which means if you're using anything other than um, a silver can or a sport tune or a torque tune motor, uh, these aluminum pinions are going to wear extremely fast. The tiny little pieces of aluminum will will shear off and turn to um, very sharp razor-like powder that will shred your spur gear. So um, being that this is America, um, I have a bit of a trouble getting Mod 6 gears. I have to order them from overseas for the most part. Uh, the Robinson Racing, um, what do they call it, uh, metric 48s and stuff don't really mesh up properly. So if you're going to stick with the stock spur gear, go ahead and get yourself a hardened Mod 6 opinion, but you're probably going to have to buy it from like RC Mart or Asia Tees or something like that. Square is a brand that makes some some really good Mod 6 pinions, um, but it's like two or three weeks for them to arrive. So I went ahead and changed out the spur gear to a 48 pitch Robinson Racing Pro. So I went with the 70 tooth uh, spur and um, I also am going to be using the titanium screw kit. Um, from Tamiya, and here's the part number there, 84393. Um, now, titanium screw is a little bit overkill for this model. Um, building up uh, titanium screws uh, t traditionally are because you want to reduce weight, and TTO2, it's basically a tank. The bathtub chassis is just weighs a ton. Um, I'm going to be throwing steel gears into the rear differential. It's going to just increase the weight ridiculously. Um, if you don't want to spend the money on the titanium screws, look to Tony's screws and get yourself a stainless steel button head screw set. Um, the machine screws in that are so much nicer. Now you can build this with the stock um, JIS screw heads with the coarse thread screws, but know this, they will back out. They will not feel like they're all the way screwed tight. Um, they're really tricky to use. Um, I basically hate those screws. Um, as soon as I built up a TTO2 using the Tony screws, stainless steel machine heads, um, and uh, it was like a night and day difference of how much better all the parts just fit together because I used those machine screws. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to get them screwed down because of the finer thread, um, but trust me, the, it's worth the 20 something bucks for the Tony screws. These ended up being close to 40 bucks for the titanium, and honestly, I don't think they're worth it. I think you should probably just uh, go with the stainless steel. Um, the other nice thing about going with titanium or the stainless steel is that on a rally car, you're going to be driving through water, you're going to be driving through mud, and um, you don't want that stuff to rust. In the, the regular screws that come with the kit, they're going to rust. So these are two of the first hop-ups that we're going to use. So here's what happens when you break it all down. Uh, we've got the um, drive shaft props here. We've got the ball bearings, which the TTO2R comes with. If you're using a standard TTO2 um, and you're still running the, the plastic bushings and the brass bushings that came with the kit, uh, stop this video now and go to uh, Amazon, your local hobby store, and get yourself um, a set of bearings for the entire car. Um, Fast Eddie makes a wonderful uh, rubber sealed bearing kit for the TTO2. They also make standard metal shield, um, but if you're going to build a rally car, for the most part, you're going to want to use rubber shield to keep the dirt out so you don't have to constantly clean and oil your bearings. Um, if you are going to use metal shields which have a slightly lower uh, rolling resistance in them, you'll probably want to use the metal shields only inside the gearbox where they're fairly well protected from the dirt and the muck. So what you see here is the, um, this is what's called the high speed gear set. Um, this allows you to use the um, optional spurs. And like I said, I went with the 48 pitch because I can get 48 pitch gears much, much easier than I can mod six. So if you're running a regular TTO2, one of the hop ups you're going to need to get is the uh, metal drive shaft along with the um, 
high speed gear set. So those are two options. I didn't put them down over here in the left because the, the TTO2R that I'm building off of comes with. And this is what that looks like built up. We've got our bearings, we've got um, the, the little screws. Now these are JIS screws, remember? So that's why I've got the JIS screwdriver. And I also um, made sure that in these four holes, I used a tiny little bit of Tamiya AW um, thread lock. So if you're not going to use the Tamiya um, thread lock, you want to make sure that you're using blue thread lock because the blue thread lock will be removable. So this is what it looks like built up. Now, one of the concerns is this prop gear here is plastic, and that is a known weakness of the TTO2. Um, however, we're going to mention why we went with the plastic one in just a second. So then we build up our prop here in step four. And here's the aluminum prop that comes with the TTO2R um, and the other front um, plastic uh, bevel gear bearings, the the prop drive, and then we've got this little rubber O-ring. Um, so what the little rubber O-ring is for is to take up some slack, and you'll see that in just a second. So step five is inserting the prop along with your spur gear and with your front and your rear bevel gears. Um, so these little rubber things are usually used in uh, shocks and stuff, but they can also be used as little shock absorbers inside of piston or uh, drive shafts like we're doing here. Um, now these things will dry out pretty quickly. They'll also absorb silicone. So when you're using them in shocks, you generally will want to coat them with something like uh, Team Associated's Green Slime or um, Cow RC Utter Butter. Um, pretty much everybody that makes grease and stuff is going to come up with something. I like the Green Slime. Um, you just put a tiny little very thin coating of the green slime on this and that will help keep it from drying out and getting brittle and then non-functioning. So before we can put the drive shaft into the deck, um, I went ahead and I upgraded to the hard plastic deck. Now they make it in two different colors, um, white and blue. I went with the blue for this one and um, here's the part number for that. Uh, the plastic on the, the blue and the white decks, they're definitely harder, which adds more rigidity to the chassis, but it also makes the screws anchor much uh, more firmly. So that's the main reason why I went with the hard deck for this build, is because I wanted those screws to be anchored in and not back out. So when you drop the shaft in, this is what it looks like. Um, we've got our plastic bevel gears, front and rear. Um, you can see that we've got the O-ring in here with its uh, little bit of uh, green slime on it to keep it from drying out. And then we need to uh, move on to the next step, but in order that we need our D parts, which again, I went with the blue um, harder plastic. Now, uh, most of this stuff, it doesn't matter that it's harder plastic, but the thing that does matter is that it matches color because that's the way I am. So the part we needed off of that was this little bit here. So that holds the front down. And this is what it looks like at the end of step five. So step six is building up the differentials. All right, um, the differentials um, in this car use plastic gears, which um, some people have trouble with. Now, if you're sticking with the standard silver can or torque tune motor or sport tune motor from Tamiya, these plastic gears are just fine. Don't worry about it. However, if you're going to increase the power from that, uh, the plastic gears in the front are still just fine, but we're probably going to want to change out those plastic gears to metal in the back. We're going to get to that in a second. So anyways, this is what we're doing now. Now, the TTO2R kit comes with a little pot of anti-wear grease, um, which is actually pretty decent for use in the front um, differential. I would use the whole entire thing in the front differential. They say just to coat it, but I would fill it right up. Um, the um, If you have a standard TTO2R your standard TTO2 kit, it probably did not come with the anti-wear grease and you'll probably need to buy some. If you're gonna buy some, don't buy the anti-wear grease. If you've got it, great. If you bought the R kit, use it. But when building it up, what I prefer to do is use the Kyosho differential greases because they have a rated CST value. So I can actually tune the differentials a little bit. So when you're building it up, um, in the front, I use the blue 30,000 CST Kyosho uh, differential gear and I coat the bevel gear that goes inside the differential 
So this bevel gear here, G2, I coated up real well with uh, Kyosho grease, making sure that the bottom of the differential housing is well coated as well. So that's what you're seeing here is there's the bevel gear and it's it's got a good coating of the Kyosho grease all over the place as well as on the bottom before the gear went down inside. And then you build up your um, four-way bevel gears here, right? You get them facing this direction. Make sure you trim the edges nice and smooth with your razor blade um, so that there's no protrusion from where they were connected to the sp um, sprue. And then um, I coat the entire, well, I coat a, a thin bit on each one of these shafts before I put the bevel gear on. And then I cover the, the thing up with the blue grease. And then I drop it down into the differential housing. And what that does is it forces whatever um, grease I had inside as well as what's on the bottom up through the edges and you get this sort of square looking X whatever. And then I will fill that square up. Let me go back. I fill this square up with a, a little bit more grease. Not a ton because I need to drop another bevel gear on top which is also coated. So when you're done, if you put too much in it, it just squirts out and that's fine. You can just scrape it off. But this is basically what you want to look like when you're done. So that the majority of this housing is full of either gears or grease. That you don't have any air or anything like that inside that will help uh, maintain um, an equal amount of grease over everything at all times. So in the rear, I mentioned that the the bevel gears on this car, being plastic, are known to uh, break down um, and not be able to handle uh, higher powered motors. And I plan on running a 13.5 T motor in this, which is a little bit stronger than um, those motors that the gears were designed for. So GPM makes a hop up set. Um, the part number is TT2100. Um, and these are steel gears and they weigh a ton. Um, there are people who have used the Tamiya DF02 rear um, differential. Um, assembly. So that will also work, but in order to do that you have to um, shim off or shave off some of the the out drives so, and I don't I don't want to do that. So I went with the GPM set. Now people have said in the past that the GPM it doesn't have the same tolerance that the Tamiya stuff does and that's really true. Tamiya's got some of the tightest tolerances out there. So um, I was curious to see, I haven't used this um, hop up before to what the, it's, um, what the gears were going to be, how well they were going to be constructed, and um, how well everything was going to fit together. So this is what it looks like all broken out. Right, we got our our uh, four planet, planetary gears here. Um, we've got our um, our ring gear here. Um, these two are our internal bevel gears, and then this is the the bevel gear that goes on the drive shaft. I'm thinking, great. Fantastic, we can eliminate all the plastic gears. Now, in the rear, I use a 5000 CST, so that's a red Kyosho diff gear. And this is what it looks like with all the, the metal gears in. I build it up just like I did the front, um, exactly the same way, except for the grease is red. And then when I get them all put together, um, I use a paint pen, a very sharp, uh, fine, fine tip paint pen, and I label what grease I used in which gear set. Alright, so um, this is the front, right? It's all plastic gears with plastic ring gear. This one here is the rear with the metal gears. So this is the metal ring gear and um, I went ahead and put in the out drives because I wanted to see how well it was going to fit and how well it was going to turn. And I'm glad that I did because if I hadn't have done that I wouldn't have realized that it was binding a little bit. Right, so I had to take it back apart and reassemble it in order to with the out drives in the housing as I was building the differential. And then I tightened the four screws down, right? And I was able to keep turning it, tighten the screws down, turn it, tighten the screws down. And by doing that, I got a smooth differential action out of it. So that's why I went ahead and installed these out drives. Now these out drives are unique to the R variant because they're metal. Um, the, the standard TTO2 out drives are plastic, so um, regardless of which kit you're using, if you're going to use this GPM upgrade, I would highly recommend building your front differential and making sure that you're putting the out drives in at this time rather than waiting for when it calls for in the manual and just keep turning it as you assemble that GPM kit.
So step seven is putting the diffs into the car. So this is what it looks like when that's done. Um, now, the, the GPM um, kit for the differential did come with a metal bevel gear for back here on the drive shaft. But what I found was is it didn't slide down on the shaft. Um, it, it went about halfway down and I couldn't get it down any farther. I even tried tapping on it with my screwdriver end to try to get it down. Not a ton of force, but just a little more than I could with my fingers, and it still didn't budge. So um, again, the tolerances on the GPM stuff is not as tight as Tamiya stuff. Um, so I went ahead and went with the plastic bevel gear here. Now this does introduce a failure point. The differential, I believe, is going to be bulletproof. I mean, the thing is just solid steel through and through. But with this gear being plastic, this this plastic gear is going to become a fail-safe for if anything is to break, it's going to be that bevel gear um, causing a fail-safe, um, which popping this out is just simply four screws, and then you can pop this gear off and pop this gear back on. But you're going to want to have some spares of this bevel gear um, on hand, because if something is going to fail, it's going to be that. Um, what you'll see is sheared teeth. I've done it. I've seen it with a 13.5T motor with uh, Tamiya BZ motor. Um, I've sheared the teeth on both the ring gear and this rear bevel gear. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then you want to make sure that the ring gears are facing the right direction. Notice that one face is this way and one face is that way. It's clear in the instructions. They even tell you, be careful about putting these in. Um, this is super important. And as you can see, I've got the labels, so I make sure I get the right bevel, the right differential at the right end of the car. So then we move on, and we're going to need some A-parts, which means we're going to need our blue A-parts sprue, which here is the part number for that. And that is all the blue parts, chassis, D, and A-parts. Um, and the A-parts will give you the caps for the differentials. So this is what it looks like once you get your caps on to your differentials. And this is the end of step nine. So step 10, we move on to suspension. Okay, so we're going to work on the rear suspension first, and we're going to drop down uh, the, the um, suspension retainer on top of the differential housing, drop in the suspension arms, and then put the shock mounts that also double as the other half of the suspension arm retainer. And when we do that, this is what we get. So as you can see, all these button head screws with the hex heads and stuff, not only do they um, create a much stronger um, mechanical connection for all the parts, they just look nice in the car rather than those uh, hex, the, the, the JIS tipped regular screws. Now we've got um, attaching the motor mount. Okay, so uh, the car comes with a plastic motor mount and the standard um, motor mount has fixed screw positions which is great for beginners because it's setting the mesh however the R kit comes with a an aluminum upgrade part which is fine um, I really prefer to use aluminum motor mounts in all cases when it creates a, a firmer non flexi motor mount it also will act as a bit of a heat sink if you're going to use the plastic motor mount, you need to use the paper donut that comes with because that will isolate the heat from the motor and keep your plastic motor mount from warping or melting. It's kind of important. Now, um, if you're going to use the, the stock spurs and the stock pinion, follow the guidelines here. It'll tell you 64T here, 68T here. These are the spur gears that you're going to be using. Um, because I used a 70 tooth spur and because I prefer more adjustability, um, I didn't use the included aluminum motor mount um, because I wanted more adjustability, like I said. So what I did was is I did some upgrades. So like I said, I'm going to use a 13.5T brushless motor. Um, this is a an atomic motor about a few years back um, and unfortunately atomic is no longer selling these motors so you can't buy this motor but any 13.5 T is probably fine I've started um, I'm really keen on the speed passion motors I like the design of the way that their end bell is laid out you don't have to solder the wires onto the top of a thing like this they actually solder into plugs banana plugs that go into the end of the motor which I think is fantastic design um, Hobbywing makes great motors Tekin um, 
you know there, there are just a lot of good motors out there if you're gonna go with a brushless motor for this car uh, make sure that you get a um, 0.5 variant motor with a 540 can uh, the standard motors the, the, the motors that don't have the 0.5 are actually a 380 uh, motor um, inside of a 540 can so do you want the 0.5 uh, 17.5 13.5 I think are really good for this anything lower than that you're gonna really start getting crazy speed and uh, you're gonna bleed off some torque and stuff so for a rally car I think a 13.5 is probably good um, you know 17.5 13.5 is about as hot as you want to go even a 21 or a 25.5 is probably fine for a rally car because rally car isn't so much necessarily about all-out speed but about acceleration and handling and stuff in the corners so I might find that the 13.5 is maybe even too hot and I might want to drop it down to uh, a 17 or even a, a 21.5 um, so here's the yeah racing motor mount that I bought instead and um, it has a sliding adjust top screw hole which is the thing that I really wanted um, is the ability to adjust my mesh and um, I bought a Robinson Racing 48 pitch six pack of pinion gears and these are hardened steel so uh, I won't have a problem with that soft aluminum to me opinion um, falling apart on me inside my gearbox is what the end bell looks like. Now I have used this motor in a previous car. Um, it was actually in my daughter's TTO2B buggy um, before we uh, transitioned her over to a different motor. Um, so I have previously soldered uh, um, wires up to this. So that's why it looks like that. But this is what the end bell looks like. Uh, sensor wires you see here in the back and the other picture as well. Plugs in here into the bottom. You want to make sure you get a sensor wire that's nice and flexible. If it's really, really stiff, um, that can cause problems. Um, so you're going to want to use a little bit of thread lock. You can see how much thread lock I use. This is the Tamiya AW thread lock. Um, sorry, not AW. I said that, I think I said that before. AG thread lock um, and uh, anaerobic gel AG thread lock. So it's red, but don't let that fool you. This is the equivalent of normal blue thread lock. And then um, you put a little tiny little bit just like that on that screw hole and then on that screw hole. And then you mount it up. Now, when you mount this up, the bottom screw needs to go in mostly tight. It needs to be just loose enough to allow the motor to rock. You don't want it to be so snug that the motor can't move. And then this screw goes in with the, um, there's a little washer that comes in the, with the motor mount that allows this, you also screw this in mostly tight, just enough to allow this to rock inside, okay? And you want to make sure that the screw that you pick for the bottom pin, uh, pivot point is such that the motor wires are angled the direction you see here in the picture because this is the direction it's going to be sitting in the chassis and the drivetrain is to this side of the motor so you want the motor wires to be um, cheating to the outside of the chassis so uh, step 12 is putting the pinion on and dropping the motor into the chassis and putting the motor housing on so the first thing we need to do is choose a pinion gear. So like I said, I bought a six pack pinion kit and um, a good starting final drive ratio for a 13.5 brushless motor is seven. This is the goal, seven. Now the car comes with a 64 and a 68 tooth spur and it comes with a 25 tooth pinion, which means if I were to use the stock stuff, I would use the 68 tooth spur and the stock pinion and Bam, perfect gear ratio. However, um, I have the 48 um, degree pitch um, pinion pack, and these are the choices that I have, right? And I went with a 70 tooth spur. Um, so it, it gives me a 7.3 final drive ratio, which is close enough to 7. I probably should have bought a 68, to be honest with you, but I, ended, I bought a 70, and that's what I'm using. It's close enough for, for government work. Um, so this is the, the pinion pack. These are all the different teeth count on the pinion. So I'm using the largest pinion from the pinion pack. So when you first drop the motor into the chassis, um, if the motor is in the center position, right? So the top screws here in the center position of its movement range, you know, the pinion doesn't touch. So what you need to do is move the motor. You rock it in the this range so that the pinion and the spur gear touch. Now. When you're using the Tamiya um, motor mount, 
you don't have this problem because it's a fixed spot, right? But I wanted more adjustability. I wanted to be able to adjust how much mesh I got. So the way you adjust it is you cut a small little strip of paper, very thin strip of paper, not much wider than your gears, and you put that in between and then push the motor so that the gears mesh with the paper in between like so. So here's my paper going down. I've pushed the motor in. You can see I'm now off of center. Here's the screw towards the center line. The gears are meshed. I then tighten it up. I then remove the motor mount, tighten the bottom, dropped it back in, and see what happens with the the teeth, right? So the teeth squish in and you create this sort of little um, wave effect into the paper. That's how you know you've gotten good mesh. So the width of the paper is now the distance between your pinion and your spur. This is the best way to you to um, get perfect mesh. And this is what it looks like when it's all finished up. All right, so the pinion is on and make sure that the pinion is dead center on the spur. Make sure that the grub screw is on the flat part of the axle and make sure that the top and the bottom screws are both snug down. You don't want to over tighten it and you don't want to over tighten the grub screw. You also may consider using a small amount of um, thread lock, blue thread lock or the AG um, stuff from Tamiya on the grub screw. Uh, just an, an immense amazingly minuscule amount just to keep it from backing out because there are two dissimilar metals and um, oftentimes the vibrations here will cause this grub screw to back out no matter how much you tighten it down so just use a very tiny amount on the grub screw. Step 13 is attaching up the lower arms on the rear okay so the one thing you want to note is the direction that these lower arms go right they show you here Okay, so you see the word Tamiya is molded into one arm of the A-arm. So with the standard setup, you want the word Tamiya to be facing towards the chassis. So this is what it looks like when it's all completed. We've got the arms on, Tamiya is facing towards the chassis, we've got the um, retainer um, piece on there with the screw holding it in. Now these arms should move 100% freely. You lift it up, it should drop. You lift it up, it should drop. There should be no resistance. It shouldn't go part way down. It should be 100% completely free. If it's not, it's time to get out your file and file down the nubs on the suspension arms just enough to get it so that you have 100% restriction free movement. Now because this is a, a rally car, Tamiya makes these block. they mold in the rear suspension, the lower suspension arm, this block. Okay, now this block is um, a droop. It keeps the droop from going too far down on an on-road car. But on a rally car, we want more droop than what they allow on an on-road car. So I highly recommend getting out your trusty, very sharp X-Acto knife and shaving off this block so it's flush with this um, cross member here on the arm. So this is what it looks like after... I'm done shaving that off. Um, just get it as flush as you can, as smooth as you can across. And while that doesn't seem like it would do much, the amount of increased droop is amazing. And then we want to attach up the rear bumper, and this is what that looks like. Now, a little pro tip here is if you're going to be using the uh, machine screws and in conjunction with the, the hop-up um, chassis parts, with the blue or the white, a teeny little bit of Tamiya grease. We're talking just just a bare, barely noticeable amount in each one of the holes in the chassis before you screw your screws in. It will make your life so much easier. The screws will, will not bind up because as you tighten these screws, the, the screw gets hot, melts the plastic, and as you keep going, you're having that, um, that added friction so by putting just the tiniest little bit of Tamiya grease in that hole before um, or on the screw before you stick it in and start to sink it down, that added amount of lubrication really makes the screw sink in better and you have less of a chance of stripping things out. So then we move on to step eight. So it's a little bit backwards, right? Um, we're going back to the front suspension now. So we're going to uh, do the front suspension arms. And this is what that looks like. Now I use this hop up here, the low friction suspension balls. Now the kit comes with plastic suspension balls. Um, these things are amazing. 
they are so worth the money. They make the suspension move so much freer than if you have the plastic ones. Um, so I highly recommend getting this upgrade. And they, there's a, a split in the ball, so you make this split even with this edge, and then so you rotate this this direction so that this split lines up with this edge and then you should be able to just boop, snap them right in with your finger they should have no resistance almost whatsoever you just boop, snap them right in and this is what they look like when they're in and the front um, suspend, uh, shock mount is on holding them together so then we move on to attaching the front lower arms and again they work just like the last ones right um, you just put them in notice that the word Tamiya is facing away from the chassis okay and they snap in and that's what it looks like the word Tamiya is facing away and we've got the front bumper on uh, exactly like it does in the rear the difference is just the arms so make sure that the word Tamiya is facing the right direction because if we were going with a short wheelbase we'd reverse these things so this is really important you don't want to mess that up so that's the end of bag A. This is what we've got. We've got our differentials built. We've got our drivetrain built. We've got our suspension arms installed. We've got the motor in and the pinion gear meshed up with the spur and the covers are on everything. And that is how we stand. Um, so I will go ahead and uh, start working on bag B. Um, it'll probably take me a couple of weekends to get that uh, not only built but recorded and edited and uh, published up to YouTube so in that time if you guys have any questions um, I'd be happy to answer them um, but I, I hope that you guys are finding this uh, format useful um, that the, the static pictures with its explanation is helpful I did my frog video this way and people seem to to find value in that so I went ahead and did this format again so if you've got any questions or comments please post them in the thing and if you like this video please give me a like